Yep, just fire away. Hope you guys are having a great day. Good weekend here. Where are we at? Who wants to go first? Raise your hand if you there you go, right here. <laughs> okay. I just want to ask you real quick, man. You've got so much, uh, you know, young talent now in the secondary. Some of the younger guys are mirror speed. They've got six foot three. Uh, how many guys have you had with that kind of skill set uh, at that position? Yeah, he's got, he's got rare size, uh, which is a good thing. He's got good length. He's got um, really good balance and body control. Uh, you know, good athletic ability. He runs well, um, and uh, he loves football. So uh, he's he's got um, he's got the talent that we like to work with. Um, he's working really hard at his craft right now, and uh, and I'm uh, I'm really fired up about his upside. Hi, Mel. Uh, how you doing? Wondering if you could just generally assess this defense. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of expectation sure. uh, at, with a lot of guys coming back, and, and clearly the safety star seems to be the the unanswered question. But I'm sure. sure you have more than that. Can you just kind of assess uh, the expectations and if they're valid? You know, valid. Yeah, I think we have a, a lot of returning uh, starters like we do. The expectations gonna be high, but the expectations are gonna be high here uh, at, at UGA every year. So uh, it's really not about that. It's about us living up to our standard and how we want to play uh, and reaching our full potential. Um, I think um, that our guys right now are working extremely hard uh, to get better at every position. Um, at, at the star position, we have several guys that are uh, taking reps there. Uh, you know, we've got Aaron Davis, D'Angelo Gibbs. Uh, we've got Tyreek McGee. We have Jarvis Wilson. All those guys are taking reps at that star position. So we're going to figure out uh, who can help us the most there. Um, you know, Mo Smith did a great job for us last year, and we need to uh, we need to replace that spot. Coach, um, so how is your secondary uh, progress coming into this year with guys like uh, Malcolm Parrish and mm -hmm. Dominic Sanders kind of leading the way there? That's right. Well, you know, you got. Um, like I said, you got Malcolm, you got Dom, uh, you got Aaron Davis, you know, seniors, guys that play a lot of football, um, that really know what's expected. And uh, I'm leaning on those guys. We're leaning on those guys to be leaders for us back there. Um, you know, DeAndre Baker's got some uh, game experience, and so we're looking to, uh, to become more cohesive, uh, to work uh, better as a unit, uh, you know, make more plays. And then we got, we got seven freshmen. Okay, and uh, and so we got to teach those guys what to do, and um, and develop these guys. You know, as a unit, uh, I tell them no child left behind. We need to make sure everybody's ready to go by the time that game starts. Man, when it comes to uh, you know Tyreek McGee, you know he's a guy that you said working at Star, yeah. and it seems like he would also want to be be one of the first few corners in the game sure. right now as well too. What's it like trying to balance getting him ready to play yeah. both positions? Is he spending one more than right. more time at one right now than the other? Right. Well, he did that a year ago, and he played corner uh, both sides and the Star position, and he handled that well. So uh, we just map out his reps every day. Uh, you know, we script uh, every rep in practice. Uh, and a lot of times we're doing two spot. We're working on both fields, and so we've, lot, we've got a lot of guys working at the same time. And we just have to make sure he gets his star reps and he gets his corner reps on both sides. And that hasn't been an issue so far. Mel, the uh, the edge rushing. What was your evaluation last year? In I mean, obviously sack numbers weren't high, but yeah. when it came to affecting the quarterback, mm -hmm. QB pressures. What yeah. was your evaluation of last year and? how much better they need to do, if any, this year? Yeah, I think we need to get a better pressure overall to affect the quarterback um, from the edge and also pocket push. Um, we have the guys that can get that done. So I think with a good coordinated pass rush, all four or five guys working together uh, to fill up all the rush lanes, uh, we can get that done. Um, that's a point of emphasis for us. Uh, red zone defense is an uh, area where we need huge improvement. Uh, minus yardage plays, another area where we need huge improvement. So pass rush. A uh, red zone efficiency, minus yardage plays, all those things we need to improve. Kirby was talking earlier about the need of improvement in the red zone. Yeah. What, what do you think was the major breakdown in red right. zone last year? Yeah, I think the major breakdown was execution. Uh, when you go back and look at the tape, um, just, uh, you know, on defense, if one guy does not do what he's supposed to do, um, you know, you're going to lose the down probably. And so, um, you know, it's a huge emphasis on execution. 
Uh, we repped it. Um, we repped the low red zone a lot more in the spring, and uh, we're pick, uh, we're picking up where we left off uh, this fall. And so, and obviously, there's some scheme things that we're looking at that we can we can do to help our players. And so, um, you know, our goal is to, to be much improved in that area. Mel, as your years as a assistant coach, uh, what's the closest uh, you've had to what you consider a dominant defense, and and what does this unit need to do to get to that level? Well, um, I know uh, when I when I coached at, at Ohio State, we won a national championship. We were pretty good on defense there. Um, when uh, in Jacksonville in 2011, I thought we were in the top ten there in Alabama uh, two years ago. Uh, you know, we were we were pretty stout there, and so. But it's really about this this group and what we can achieve. When we talk about what's our identity going to be this year. Uh, every year you have a new team. It's a new defense. So, um, you know, we're we're working to be um, to be at our best. Um, and I, I'm pleased with the way the guys have have worked. Um, I thought we I thought we didn't get as as we didn't get as much done yesterday as we could have. So we're looking for a big day today. Mel, how vital is a guy like John Atkins, who, who may not put up sure. numbers, but has a pretty tough task in that nose guard spot? Yeah, yeah. John, John, uh, you know, he the, the middle of your defense, you want to be very strong up the middle, uh, just like baseball. So you got to be strong at the defensive tackle, inside linebacker and safety. You got to be stout. Um, and, and those guys, are he's an anchor for us in the middle. Um, he doesn't get a lot of credit. He's not going to be flashy. Uh, there's not a lot of French pastry right there with him. It's more meat and potatoes. And so um, as long as he's consistent, and he can anchor the middle for us, but that's what we need him to do. Uh, so, uh, being an upperclassman, um, how has uh, Trenton Thompson kind of um, uh, emerged as a leader amongst the defensive line? And then um, also, um, how has uh, Trace got kind of come in and help improve his game in the game of others? Yeah, uh, uh, Trenton is a, is a lead by example guy. He brings a, a tremendous amount of energy to the field. Uh, he's very, very disruptive. He he runs to the he runs to the ball, um, and he's very consistent in, in that matter. So, uh, and and when you have guys that lead by example, uh, that really shows the way for for the other guys. Uh, Trey Scott has come in and done a tremendous job. He's a he's a technician. He's uh he's very good at uh, coaching and and teaching in a progression. Um, run and pass rush, and so and I think the guys have grown uh, to like him and respect him. And they've taken to him, and I, I, I feel like we're going. We have a chance to have a strong unit. Coach, there's been a lot of talk about Roquan Smith mm -hmm. already, and and just kind of his impact on the defense leadership. Uh -huh. um, you know, can you just talk about him? We asked players about him the other day, and he, they kind of lit up. I mean, it seems <laughs> like he's really, you know, yeah. had an impact on on this team. Yeah, uh, Roquan's uh, he's come he's come a, he's come a long way, uh, and he's playing really really fast right now. Um, he's showing uh, outstanding leadership for us. He's playing with a lot of confidence, um, and he's a guy that can make a lot of plays in the run game uh, and um, as a as a blitzer and in coverage. And so um, I just like his ability to be an all around player. He loves football. He's a student of the game. Uh, he's a good leader for us. Uh, he got he has a high character, um, and he's a guy that's, that's going to be he's going to be um, he's going to lead the way for us, uh, quite frankly. And we're going to need him to, to be consistent, and I expect him to do that. Curious about how many uh, guys you want to play. Typically, I know on defensive line everyone's sure. subbing as many as you can, but yeah. especially when in, in the back end, the other spots when you have so many returning starters, but you've got so many talented. Newcomers, right. how does that affect how many guys you might shuttle in and out? Yeah, I, I think in some games last year we played 18, 19 guys in a game. Um, we need to have uh, a strong two deep in the secondary, especially. Uh, we, we're usually um, in nickel or dime, um, probably about 80-90% of the time, and so we usually have five or six defensive backs in the game. So to have a strong, um, to be to be uh, have a lot of depth there, you have to develop the young guys. Those guys have to be ready to go because it's always you, you know you're one you're one play away from being in the game. And it's next man up. We're obviously going to rotate a lot of guys in the defensive line. We want to play as many guys as we can. Uh, guys that have a role, um, they, you get more buy-in. You have better team chemistry. So uh, we want to get all these guys ready to play. Um, and and uh, so as we practice and as we scrimmage. Uh, eventually, we'll be we'll know who we can count on to go to go out there and play for us, whether they're starters or they're or they're the next man up. 
When you talk about developing guys in your secondary, yeah. what's the skill set you see on a daily basis with D'Angelo Gibbs and uh, some of the other young guys who else uh, might be uh, you know, ahead of the curve in terms of being able to help right away? Yeah, D'Angelo has very good size, and he's, he's athletic, and he's, and he's strong. And so uh, he's a guy that can do a lot of things in terms of block protection, uh, fitting the run, but he's also athletic enough to, uh, to, to give you what you need in coverage. Uh, Amir Speed, again, we talked about him earlier. Uh, he's, got, he's got very good size. Uh, he's, a, he's a quick study. Um, he's, a, he's usually a tell him once type guy. And so um, he's also a guy that's come along. Richard LeCount uh, is a see ball, get ball type guy. He plays very, very fast. He's very instinctive. Um, and he's a guy that, that uh, flashes out there. But all of those guys at some point in time, you know, they, they show you, they remind you why, why they're here. And so we have to develop all of those guys and, and try to get them uh, to the point where they can go out on the field and play winning football for us. My question is kind of similar, but I, I, I guess I'll be a little bit more specific. It, it, are you seeing anybody from the freshman who can contend for that, the, the cornerback position and kind of develop into that? kind of lockdown corner that you hear about that everybody's trying to find? Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of early for that. You know, I think all those guys we brought in at, at corner uh, will be able to help us. It's just at what point they'll be able to help us is the question. And so, um, and it's a it's a day-to-day -day deal with those guys because they have to learn what to do and how to do it before they can go out actually in the game and, and help us. But um, I'm, I've been pleased with all the guys we brought in so far. Um, in terms of a lockdown corner, um, you know, I'm not I'm not sure exactly what the, the the true definition of that is, but we need guys that they, we need guys out there that can win the one on ones, and can, and win the contested throwing battles. And I think we've got the guys that had the potential to do that uh, relative to those young guys we talked about. Hey Mel, uh, working with Kirby at Alabama and yeah. being in year two with him now, uh, how have you seen him kind of progress uh, in that? Uh, journey as a coach and yeah. from year one here at Georgia to year two now what are some mm -hmm. changes or differences you've seen yeah well well Kirby's he, he coach smart he's the same guy day in and day out and uh, so he's very consistent he's a uh, very passionate he's very knowledgeable um, he's he's got a very high expectation and, and, a, and a high standard and, and and he's been like that since the time I met him and so just going into year two uh, we feel like we have a really uh, good staff, a cohesive staff, and we really like uh, working with uh, Coach Smart. And I feel like that he has confidence in us to be able to help him get this job done. Coach Tucker, can you tell me a little bit about the freshman inside linebackers you have, Monty Rice, Jaden, and moving Jaden to inside, and yeah. uh, Nate McBride, if you would? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Monty Rice is, and all those guys are, they have uh, really good upside. Uh, they've got good size. They all run well, um, and they really want to be good players. Um, you know that you can tell just by the way they go about their business. They pay attention in the walkthroughs. They're very serious about it. In the meetings, they're very serious about it. You can see those guys get better and better. Uh, you know as we go, and they've got some some pretty good players in front of them to learn from. And so um, I think we have a chance to have a pretty good unit right there. We'll see. Guys, you guys are gonna let me off the hook with about ten minutes. Appreciate it. All right, Claude, you got anything for me, Claude? I'll ask about a local kid, uh, Jaleel Leguins. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Name. Excuse me, Jaleel at, at linebacker. Jaleel Leguins. Leguins, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess he's working some at outside linebacker That's right. now. What's the thought process moving him from inside to outside? Yeah, he has a skill set for for outside backer. You know, he's got really good straight line speed, and he's a, he's very very strong. And so he's shown the ability to pass rush. You can't, you can never have enough rushers on the edge. Mel, what are your thoughts on Chauncey Manack and his ability to, to maybe play defensive end, yeah. uh, outside linebacker, maybe kind of a hybrid role, and all the stuff you're doing cross training him there? Yeah, we like we like Manack what he can bring to us athletically. You know, he's he's got a really good body. He's really strong, but he's athletic. He's shown some some pass rush ability. Um, you know, he can rush outside. He he can rush on guards and centers inside. Um, and he's 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 very very tough. So um, we don't have an issue with him playing end and holding up in a run game, but giving us some some pass rush and be able to affect the quarterback. So he's a guy we have to continue to develop. He's a young guy. We've got a, a lot of young guys, but we see we see marked improvement in him. Coach, how's uh, Dominic Sanders doing? And was last year was he pretty fighting injury a good part of the year? Yeah. Well. You know, Dom's, Dom's, Dom's doing well. Uh, he's one of our leaders. Uh, he's very consistent. 
Um, he's, he plays fast. He practices hard. Uh, he's very attentive in the meetings. Um, and he's a really, uh, really good guy to be around. And it's a privilege to coach guys like that because, you know, he, he brings a type of energy and, and passion for the game that energizes me as a coach. You know, I want to I want to bring it every day for him to try to help him get better. And, um, you know, last year, you know, injuries are part of the game. So at some point in time, you know, everyone's going to be a little, little bit nicked up. But he's a very tough guy. He's going to push through and do whatever he can do for this football team. Coach, what can you tell us about Trey Scott? You know, he's coming in here. We haven't got a chance to speak to him. We yeah. don't know a lot about him. We hear from the recruits <laughs> what a high energy guy he is. But what can you tell us about his coaching uh, technique and philosophy? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Trey is a Trey Scott is a high energy guy. Uh, he's he he really uh, does a great job as a teacher, you know, and then motivating and developing players, which is that's our job as coaches to do. Uh, he's really sound in, in the fundamental aspects of the game, uh, the teaching progressions. Um, there's no waste of motion with him on the field in the drill work, uh, whether it's walkthrough or uh, during a special teams period or anything. He's extremely organized. He knows exactly what he wants to get done. And he holds those guys to a high standard. And uh, he, he's doing a really good job for us. He's a good coach. One more last question. Over. Mel, how active were you last winter with some of these guys that were looking at the NFL and, and to have Bellamy and Carter back on your defense? So what does that mean in terms of uh, you know what you're able to do? Yeah, well, I'm, the, the guys that have decided to come back, we're really excited and glad that they did come back. I'm, I'm a resource for these guys. Uh, anyone that has any questions about anything on or off the field, I'm more than willing to help, and that's including uh, the NFL. Thank you. Okay, thanks, guys. Have a good weekend. <laughs>